Overtime! Donkey Kong is an absolute classic. It's among my own all-time favorite arcade games, and this original coin-operated cabinet is one of the highlights of my collection. I actually did a complete restoration of this machine several years ago, quite some time before I started this little YouTube channel. For a while now, I've been meaning to go back and share my experiences from that project with my viewers here, since I took lots of photos and even some video footage to document that process way back when. As it turns out, we've been doing weekly high score tournaments lately on the Overtime Arcade private members only Discord, and this week's game just so happens to be Donkey Kong. In honor of that, I figured I'd do a little combo episode here with some video of me trying to beat my own high score alongside a retrospective of my restoration of this exact machine. So it's on like Donkey Kong. This project actually started with the PCB. I found an untested Donkey Kong PCB on eBay for a great price, so I snapped it up. I tested it out in my Donkey Kong Jr. cocktail, and it turns out it was working perfectly. It was just missing the ribbon cable, so once I fixed that, it was totally good to go. So I was on the hunt for a dedicated cabinet for this uh, Donkey Kong PCB, because I didn't just want to swap it in and out of the Donkey Kong Jr. cocktail. And eventually I found one way out in Ohio. You know, often, you know, Nintendo cabinets go for a high premium. Uh, I found a really good deal. I had to drive all the way from Virginia to Ohio to grab it, uh, but it was great. You know, definitely a bit of a project. This thing had been converted to Superbike, so eventually, you know, Donkey Kong stopped earning. This, uh, the, the, the operator bought a Superbike conversion kit with the hopes that it would start earning money as a different game, and this was basically the starting point. So I had a cabinet. It was in relatively good shape good bones, you might say. Uh, it still had the original Nintendo Transformer assembly, which was great. Some of the wiring, you know, uh, partial harness. So I thought it would be a really, really good starting point. Definitely really, really dirty, absolutely filthy. Lots of, you know, dust bunnies and debris. So I had to clean all of that out and scrub the inside with, you know, simple green and whatever. But the sides of the cabinet are, are really what drew me in and, and made me feel like I was getting a really good deal. Nintendo used this really unusual gel coat sort of uh, uh, sides on their cabinet, which is really, really hard to fix. It's really hard to reproduce. So you generally want to find a good original you know, example, be, and maybe touch up, uh, touch it up a little bit if you really have to. Uh, but if the, if the if the sides of a Nintendo cabinet are really damaged, you're kind of out of luck, and you basically have to you know relaminate it or or something. And that's a huge ordeal. I didn't want to do that, especially early on in the hobby. So I felt very good about having you know a cabinet like this so that was at least you know 95, 97 percent you know good to go. The biggest issue cosmetically was on the front of the cabinet. You know, to the right of the coin door. The, the kick plate had been damaged and repaired with just a, a black piece of metal. I eventually just kind of cleaned that up and left it there. I figured it would be a lot less obtrusive than trying to fix it and, and blend in the paint and everything. So, you know, certainly imperfect and it was never going to be a, a museum piece, but I was happy with that. Looking at the serial tag in the back of the cabinet confirmed that this was originally a Donkey Kong that had been converted later on. Uh, serial number 163365, so really excited about that. And yeah, just a really great starting point. I was able also to get a uh, a control panel from the same seller. He had a spare one. And the, the, the bezel was actually already on this cabinet, just swapped around so you couldn't see the artwork. So turning that around, you know, it had the original uh, marquee light fixture. So it, like I said, a really, really good starting point for this project. You know, the seller also gave me a, a 20EZ monitor, a Sanyo 20EZ Nintendo monitor, which is the correct original monitor uh, for this cabinet. This thing really also is kind of filthy though. The, the, this monitor, the chassis, just, you know, years of dust and grime and nicotine and whatever. Uh, so this was the first ever time that I attempted to wash an arcade monitor. I had seen, you know, Chance and Josh from the Canadian Arcade do it before. So I felt confident in, in taking it out and hosing it down and cleaning it off and everything. And 
And look at how beautiful this was once we got it all cleaned up. The yoke was shiny, everything was just gleaming. Uh, made it a lot more pleasant to eventually work on this monitor and just, you know, what a difference a little bit of cleaning makes. So really, really happy about that. And again, that gave me more confidence to continue, you know, washing monitors in the future. When I initially went to test out the monitor, just turn, you know, hook it up to power from the transformer uh, assembly in the cabinet. I was getting some raster, you know, some signs of life. Obviously, obviously this monitor wasn't perfect, but at least it would turn on and, and power up. Uh, that, you know, I, I then decided, hey, let's hook up my uh, PCB that I know is working to this wiring harness that was left over. I guess maybe the Superbike conversion kit used the original Nintendo uh, wiring harness. And look at that, right? We've got, we've got Donkey Kong playing on the monitor in the cabinet already. So we're making great progress here. You know, I, I felt, I, you know, feeling really good, right? Uh, we take a closer look, make a, you know, try to make some adjustments. Uh, and with uh, Donkey Kong and some other Nintendo games, you don't just make adjustments on the uh, the control pots, the adjustment pots on the monitor. There's actually some pots on the uh, the PCB as well. So a little bit, a little bit strange. So I was able to get a relatively good picture here, uh, but obviously the biggest issue was some vertical collapse, partial vertical collapse. You know, you sort of see the left-hand side of the image here, kind of where Donkey Kong is should be reaching for uh, barrels. You can't even see the barrels because the, the image is partially collapsed. We call that vertical collapse because this is a vertical uh, orientation uh, uh, monitor. So the monitor has been rotated 90 degrees. So even though it looks like it's squeezed horizontally, really the way the monitor works, it, that's the top, the whole monitor is, is turned sideways. So we've got partial vertical collapse as an issue that I had to uh, deal with. So. You know, really, it was it was really very simple. Uh, all I did was install a cap kit and dialed in the B plus spot on to 108 volts. And you know, the image is a little bit washed out here, but it, it came back to life, looking great, great geometry and color. And this is actually one of the nicer monitors that I have in my collection, even to this day. So really, really happy how I was able to just do a little bit of refurb on that monitor and get it sort of good to go. Um, so, you know, at that point, we've got a, a, a cabinet in decent condition, obviously, you know, lots of cosmetic work to do, and we've got a working PCB and a working monitor. So the next thing I turned my attention to was the controls. Obviously, you can't play Donkey Kong without good controls. You know, there's some controversy about that these days. Um, but, you know, I had I actually had two sets of controls from the two different control panels, from the converted Superbike control panel and the other Donkey Kong control panel I was able to get from the same seller. And, you know, first, these joysticks include especially one of them were really, really rusted. So I had to do a lot of work to, you know, remove all that rust and sand it off and all that. And they weren't perfect, but at least one of them was really good at the end of that process. You know, the rest of the, the joystick and Nintendo joysticks are all metal. So lots of rust and corrosion. I had to clean all of that off from sort of the, the, the housing or base of the joystick, uh, both parts of it inside and out. It was really hard to get inside and get all that uh, remove all of that rust and corrosion on the inside. All these different metal pieces from the whole sort of control panel. Uh, really lots of work, did most of it outside in the nice weather and got all that, all that rust off and got everything in a much better state. Completely disassembled everything from the control panel, the buttons and the, the switches and all of the, the hardware, the nuts and bolts and everything, uh, completely disassembled all of that, gave that a nice deep cleaning you know, put the joystick back together, sort of cherry pick the best pieces and put that back together, put a little bit of uh, Shin Etsu uh, silicone grease, which is the, the the lubricant I recommend to lubricate all metal uh, and Nintendo joysticks. So that was looking pretty good, but there was a lot of scratches on the ball top of the of the joystick handle and I couldn't live with that. So uh, went to town with some Novus uh, plastic polish and a, a, you know, a lot of bit of uh, elbow grease. And I think it turned out relatively well. Again, not perfect. I could have put more time in and tried to get it even better, but this was, like I said, never going to be a museum piece restoration. So I was pretty happy with that. And in general, that's what I go for in my restorations. I'm not looking for something that's going to be absolutely pristine because that's just not realistic. You know, as soon as these things arrive from the factory, we're put on to a floor in a public arcade. You got kids and adults beating on them, you know, all kinds of patina and wear and tear. And that's really the, the, the realism and authenticity that I'm going for in my restorations. Uh, I also, also polished up the buttons as well. Uh, 
those were, you know, were all scratchy and had some like, you know, cigarette burns or cigarette, you know, kind of melting, you know, uh, points, uh, scorching, whatever. Wasn't able to get them perfect, but I think they turned out pretty well. Certainly, you know, preferable to going with a complete, you know, reproduction uh, set of buttons. Uh, and then I wired it all back together, assembled it, assembled it back together. I had taken a lot of photos when I took it all apart to, to make sure I got everything back in the exact right, exact right spot, uh, ready to go. All the, you know, the, the, the micro switches and the wiring and everything. So just making sure that we'd be able to plug this in and it would still work. Um, there are also some metal parts of the cabinet that I had to work with. So there's this channel that sort of attaches to the bottom uh, of the bezel that kind of you know helps you lift it up and out and kind of seats it in place. Took me you know, quite a bit of work to pry that off of the, the plastic bezel. Lots of, you know, rust in there. I guess people would spill drinks or whatever, or maybe, you know, cleaning, you know, product, cleaning liquids would sort of, you know, soak in down there and just eventually corrode uh, uh, the, the, the metal. Um, so, you know, lots of, lots of of uh, work to pry that off and then you know sticking uh, that and some of the other metal pieces into a vinegar bath uh, and letting that soak for a long time I wish I had a better you know sort of tub that was sort of you know uh, uh, long enough but narrower so I didn't have to use so much vinegar but that did a good job really you know leaving it out overnight and, and dissolving most of the uh, the rust uh, and then I took the rest of it off with some you know sandpaper uh, and then sprayed it with you know my favorite rust-oleum universal satin black uh, to completely cover those metal pieces and, and bring them back to basically uh, brand new. There's that, my favorite paint right there. And, you know, I also wanted to do some, you know, limited minimal touch-ups on the cabinet. Uh, and, you know, I did a bunch of research and everyone recommended this Krylon Color Master Island Splash Blue uh, as the closest thing you can find to uh, an exact match to the original Donkey Kong Blue. Certainly, I think the closest you're gonna find without getting something, you know, custom, custom mixed for you, custom matched for you. Um, I, the only place I was able to find this was Hobby Lobby, but there's, you know, one relatively close to where I live, so that wasn't a problem. I sprayed some on some uh, cardboard just to kind of compare it to the cabinet, and it looked pretty close. Again, not exactly perfect, but that's okay, because I'm just doing a little bit of touch up in a couple of places, you know, not doing huge swaths of the cabinet, so I figured that would be okay. So, you know, like, here's an example of, I think this was like the best back edge of the cabinet, kind of a chunk, a small chunk taken out there, maybe the size, you know, the, the width of your, uh, of, a, of your thumb or something, and a little bit of touch up right there. Again, this doesn't look perfect. I think I sanded it a little bit after I, I applied this at this point uh, to blend it in, but you know, not so bad, not too noticeable. This is actually, the image is rotated. This is the sort of underside, the lip of the cabinet. This is probably the worst part where, you know, some of the original, you know, side, you know, panel has sort of chipped off. And again, you know, uh, not perfect with the, the touch up, but you know, makes it a lot, makes that damage a lot less noticeable, certainly if I was, you know, leaving it. And it, you know, I can always like repair it in a more professional way if I wanted to at some point, but for my purposes, hey, this is totally fine. So here we are at this point, right? We've got a working PCB. We've got a working monitor. Uh, we've done some touch-ups on the uh, the paint. Uh, we've got a, a, a control panel, sort of clean, broken down, putting back together. We've still got some cosmetic work to do here. We need to figure out a, a, a marquee. Uh, we've got some instruction stickers that we need to source, that kind of stuff. But, you know, sort of, again, making great progress. And just a quick spoiler alert, this project went so smoothly. Again, this was years ago. I was very early in my you know journey in this restoration hobby. I didn't have too many projects under my belt but this thing went so smoothly and like tricked me into thinking it was it was always going to go this well and gave me tons of maybe you know overconfidence in my abilities but this was really really great so if you're ever considering you know doing a restoration a nintendo cabinet might not actually be that bad so just keep that in mind if you're ever thinking about this so again on with the the restoration you know looking at you know again at the, some of the cosmetic stuff looking at the top of the cabinet one of the things that's cool about these nintendo cabinets is that they have flat tops so you can put stuff on them. I have an old TV and a VCR on top of mine. You can store things, whatever. Most cabinet tops are sloped, so they're not great for putting stuff on top. Um, and, and so that was that was great. But this one, this, this Donkey Kong cabinet that I had, you know, it had been, I don't know, in a warehouse or a barn or something. And so we needed to do something uh, to restore the top of the cabinet. Again, really simple, a little bit of, you know, cleaned it up, a little bit of light sanding, you know, taped off, you know, the, the, the cabinet to avoid overspray. 
sprayed on some some of that same rust-oleum universal satin black and look how nice that came out right again we've got the uh the the top bracket that holds the marquee in place that was painted and then the top of the cabinet painted look how nice that looks looks great awesome beautiful uh, uh that's maybe one of the nicer sides of the cabinet uh, I was eventually able to source a Donkey Kong uh, marquee, again, for a great price. I actually found this on one of the, the Facebook groups. Um, the only thing that now, you know, looking back, that gives my OCD a little bit of whatever is, so there was technically three different artwork sets uh, for Donkey Kong. They all look exactly the same except for the copyright uh, notices. I think the first one had... Was it no copyright or did it just say copyright Nintendo? This is actually the second version that says copyright Nintendo 1981. And then the third version says copyright Nintendo of America 1981. And so everything else on my cabinet says Nintendo of America, except the marquee only says Nintendo. So it's a little bit of a mismatch, um, but I'll, I'll, let, I'll, I'll give myself some, uh, some grace and let it slide. Uh, I replaced the starter and the, uh, the fluorescent bulb from the, uh, the marquee light fixture slapped on that uh, new mark or that marquee that I was able to find and just you know look at this thing now in the dark it's looking great and I actually picked up that play choice 10 while I was working uh, in the middle of the project of the Donkey Kong so really sort of like seeing those uh, two things coming to life in my garage uh, and then we're kind of in the home stretch here uh, I needed to get some, you know, some new side art. I got uh, a great set of side art decals from Phoenix Arcade. Really kind of an interesting story here. Uh, I think um, the post office lost the first shipment that Darren from Phoenix sent me. And then he sent me uh, a replacement that uh, the post office just completely destroyed in the mail. And then he overnighted me uh, via FedEx a third set. And that's what I eventually put up on the cabinet. So, you know, I had opened up the, uh, unrolled the decals and were kind of letting them uh, flatten out and then one of the things that's kind of a little bit tricky with installing applying the decals the side art decals on donkey kong is getting them lined up exactly people have gone through all of this sort of work to kind of you know measure from the edges to the top of the sticker and, and all that sort of stuff uh, but what i was actually able to do was kind of use little remnants of the original artwork almost as registration points to align uh, the new side art. So the way that uh, the monitor mounts in the Donkey Kong cabinet is that there are carriage bolts that go through the sides, the actual sides of the cabinet that hold that, that mount the monitor. And so you have these five bolts on either side. And Nintendo had the foresight to have additional hardware to allow you to rotate the monitor for a conversion eventually or whatever. So I removed uh, the, the five uh, bolts, uh, carriage bolts from each side, and there was remnants of the original side art stickers kind of hiding under the heads of those carriage bolts uh, on either side. And we can take a closer look here and sort of see where those, you know, and I was able to, to use the just those little pieces that were left over uh, from the original side art decals to align the new artwork to make sure it was in the exact right spot. So. And then here it is with the side art attached. Uh, what else? We got new uh, instruction stickers uh, that I got from this old game. Uh, I got new team molding from Mike's Arcade. Lots of uh, little hardware bits and bobs uh, from Mike's Arcade as well. And just, you know, when, when, when I finished this project, I was personally in such awe uh, of like, I couldn't believe that I was able to do something like this, right? To, to bring something, you know, back to life that, that, you know, I had gotten as a completely non-working game, had been converted, it wasn't even Donkey Kong anymore, you know, kind of trashed. And then, you know, through all of that sort of hard work and a lot of Googling and watching videos and reading about other people's experiences, I was able to bring this thing back to life. And I think, you know, I think I did a relatively good job. Obviously, we, you know, it's not perfect. And the biggest thing is we've got that uh, black sort of piece of metal down by the coin door. But if I didn't point it out and you weren't looking for it, would you even really notice, right? A casual person's probably not going to see it. But yeah, that beautiful new team molding and sard art. So really, really happy with, with how this came out. And again, I love playing Donkey Kong. I was so happy for uh, for for Donkey Kong to be chosen for this week's uh, uh, weekly tournament for the uh, the channel members, and yeah, that's that's been a lot of fun. So if you're not familiar, I've I've talked about this before, but. You know, if you're ever looking for a way to support the channel, you know, I always appreciate you, you know, watching, subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, all that stuff really helps with the algorithm, helps, you know, YouTube recommend my videos to other people like you. And things have been going awesome lately, getting a ton of subscribers and lots of views and, and things have been just been just been going great. 
But if you're ever looking for another way to support the channel, I do have this uh, Overtime Arcade, you know, channel membership program. Click that join button down below if you wanna learn more about it. Basically, you give me a dollar ninety nine a month and I get to keep about half of it after Google, you know, YouTube takes their cut. Uh, and in exchange, you know, not only are you supporting the channel, you get access to some awesome exclusive uh, channel members only perks like the aforementioned uh, private members only Discord, which is super active, a ton of fun. We're constantly chatting about what we're working on and what we're picking up and playing and whatever. I'm sharing a lot of behind the scenes sort of sneak peeks of what's going on. Uh, you also get access to our uh, monthly members only live stream. So I do an additional live stream every month just for Overtime Arcade channel members, which is a ton of fun. We play games, we talk. I even have them join the, the voice chat on the Discord so they can join the live stream on the broadcast and, and talk and whatever, which is great. And as a channel member, you get early access to all new videos. So if you're not a channel member, you're probably watching this video on Sunday or sometime after uh, once it's been released to the public. But channel members get to watch my videos uh, typically a day early so they were watching this on Saturday so if you're feeling left out by any of that like I said click on that join button down below to learn more about what it means to become an overtime arcade channel member I think we're about uh, 60 channel members at this point which is totally totally awesome I'm blown away by all of the support but um, yeah so you know, I tried really hard I think it did okay on some of this gameplay didn't exactly beat my own uh, high score. I did recently set a new personal high score somewhere in the uh, 60,000 range, a little bit better than I did uh, here, uh, which is my submission uh, uh, for the uh, the weekly high score tournament. I think I've been beaten already. A couple other people are over uh, 100,000, but that'll be my next goal, trying to break 100,000. But anyway, uh, you know, this is not the channel to learn how to become a, an elite Donkey Kong player or an elite player of any of these games. I'm okay at Donkey Kong. I'm okay at Robotron. I'm pretty terrible at, at most other games. But anyway, I think we'll wrap it up here. I hope you like this uh, video, a bit of an experimental format. Maybe I'll do something like this again in the future with like Robotron and Tempest and some other projects, some other restorations that predated the launch of this channel. So let me know down below in a comment if, you, if you'd like that, if you like this format, if you'd like to see something like that in the future, I can definitely do that. I can definitely uh, do that kind of thing. And um, yeah, be sure to hit like, hit that like button if you did like this video uh, or dislike it if you didn't, that's totally okay. That's good feedback for me too. But yeah, I think that'll do it for this episode of Overtime Arcade. As always, I'm Charlie. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime! overtime.